All right, let's begin with assembly. As you can see, got some nice orange corner brackets on here. Thought I'd put them on there, make them look a little bit nicer. We're going to start by assembling the spring head. Now, one of the things I didn't mention in one of the previous videos that I want to bring out here, when you install the uprights here, you want to loosen these a little bit and pull those uprights all the way up. These are half inch bolts that go into a 9 16 hole. There's a little slop in there. So you want to get them all the way up, tighten them down, get the inside as close, uh, as lined up as you can. You're not going to be perfect. And when you run your carriage bolt through, you're going to be able to feel the threads dragging a little bit on there. So what you're going to want to do when you get to this point, you're going to want to take your drill and go in and start working on that. Smooth it out in there. So we don't want the threads catching. And the whole idea is to get this to feel just as smooth as butter. And once you get it so it runs through, runs through real nice like that, you can then proceed. I have already attached my eye bolt onto here. And a good starting measurement for your eye bolt. I go from right where the curved meets the shank right here. From here down uh, roughly roughly four inches. We're gonna be playing with that maybe a little bit later. Get her in, get her all locked down. Very important, we mentioned before, I don't know if it's easier to show you here or not. But um, you can see there's a flat right here. Get that light up. It's a flat right there on this washer. And we're, we're going to need some clearance here. When you install your eye bolt, you um, want to make sure that it is pushed, that it's pushed, I guess it would be this hole here, all the way forward up against here like so. That eye bolt is going to run on this um, spacer here and we want to get it all the way forward because that spacer is going to walk forward as the spring is compressed and we just want to give it a little bit of room, a little bit of room to move. So about four inches from here to here you got your flat right there and you've got this pulled all the way forward, tightened down. The next thing we're going to talk about is the nut that goes on. We're going to use a inch and a half half inch bolt, like so. That's what this is. And a unistrut spring nut. Now spring nut has spring on the bottom. We don't want the spring so we are going to pop the spring off. Comes off fairly easy. Be careful you don't dig a hole in your finger with the spring when it pops off. Been there, done that. It's not fun. You're going to end up with something like so. We're going to insert that. Let me show you. Going to go in there like so, and this is what you're not seeing underneath, like so. So, again, eye bolt in the far hole, as we mentioned, eye bolt here, the bolt with the spring nut right here. 
Now this is going to be different when we do the um, uh, adjusting head. But this is the way we do the spring head. Get things smoothed out here so your bolt wants to run through. At this point we will um, disassemble what we've got here and we'll put things together. Probably should have had this all disassembled beforehand. I'll hold it up here so you can see some of the pieces as I take it apart. <laughs> I hope you can't hear it in the video. It just started raining. Figures. <laughs> Last time it was a neighbor's dog. This time it's rain. I'm going to take my eye bolt. I'm going to slide my spacer on like so. I'm going to put a 9 16 washer and my McMaster card die spring. I'm going to slide another washer in here, like so. I'm going to bring it around here a little bit. See now if I can work without knocking the camera over. That would be nice. I'm going to slide. I use a gold washer just for looks would be a 9 16 washer. You don't need anything that fancy. Now I'm going to thread this nut on and I've got to do a little bit of measuring here. So I'm going to tighten this down as I do. Of course it's going to compress the spring. I want to get it down far enough that I can get this nut on here. Now this nut, or this is the the hole here in this nut is where we're going to be driving our roll pin a little bit later, but for now I'm just going to line it up. I'm not going to put in the roll pin drop in a quarter inch bolt to simulate the roll pin and now I'm going to back out on this until, until I hit my camera <laughs> ruin my new camera there we go all right now I want to focus my attention right now on the length of my spring under compression blue to blue. I want it to be an inch and seven eighths. And it just so happens that on this spring I am just about perfect. I'm a 32nd of an inch too long. I should live with that. Now, what you're going to have when your spring is compressed to an inch and seven eighths, it is also compressed to a hundred pounds tension. And we're going to like that when we get to using the jig. If you don't get it compressed to exactly a hundred, to exactly an inch and seven eighths, don't worry about it. Get it as close as you can. Now, you can play around with, with shims. You can uh, add a shim here, which is just a washer. Add another washer. Maybe you, maybe you need to remove a washer. Whatever. Play around. Shim it the best you can. You might have to grind a little off of the inch and three sixteenths spacer. Whatever. Get it down as close to inch and seven eighths as you can. Because when we go to use the jig, when we tighten it and we pull on the uh, post here, we're going to start compressing that jig or that uh, spring. And that spring being under 100 pounds of tension means that the moment I get over here where you can see a little bit better, 
the moment that I pulled far enough that this washer can just be turned, just barely, I've compressed that string. I've got a hundred pounds of tension on my string, and I can use that for uh, the hundred pounds for checking my final uh, specification for any string length. So get it as close to an inch and seven eighths as you can. Now, as far as this hundred pounds goes. That's not some magic voodoo number that uh, if I'm 110 pounds, my string isn't going to measure right. If I'm 80 pounds, my string isn't going to measure right. No, it's an approximate 100 pounds. People uh, wondered, what poundage do I use? What tension do I use to check my string length? Do I use 300? Do I use 50? Do I use 200, 100? What do I use? They said, use 100. And 100-ish, right? You don't have to be exactly 100. If you were to measure your string length at 100 pounds, crank it up to 130, 140 pounds, you're not going to notice any change in your in your string length uh, under that little bit of difference. So uh, get her compressed to close to an inch and seven eighths, and you'll be at a good enough tension to accurately check your finish string length. Okay, I know there are some things I have probably forgotten here, but this is the um, oh, important thing. This is the spring head. We're going to be driving a roll pin down into there, and when you do so, make sure that you have pressure supporting directly underneath the nut here. Don't um, don't take your nice jig and slam away like this. <laughs> you're going to ding up your threads and you're not going to be happy. So support this when you drive this in. Another important thing about this. There we go. A roll pin has here I go with my camera again. A roll pin has a groove down one side, like so. When you drive your pin in, you want to position it so that the groove is facing in, inward, okay, away from the jig head. You want the groove on this side. Reason being, when we go to wrap our strands around this, we want a nice, smooth, round surface to wrap. We don't want to have to deal with that uh, nasty groove. So we'll drive it in, like so. And uh, I'm going to do that here in a little bit. I'm going to just take this Pass it slowly around so you can kind of get an idea of how this has been assembled. And I apologize for my jiggliness. So that is the spring head. And a little more accurate, put the post in there. That's the, that's the spring head. In the next segment, we're going to talk about assembling the adjusting head, which is very much the same. Uh, it, it's the simpler of the two. So get your spring head assembled, and next time we'll talk about assembling the adjusting head.